God's doing, we understand that God says He's just a matter of being a, a touch away, a moment away. We just have to trust Him in the moments that we're living. Mark 10, he uses the illustration of the child. He says, Verily I say to you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God is as a little child, he shall not enter therein. You know, children are trustworthy. They they trust others, and it's always amazing to watch them. And, and the most children, if you say to them, you know, they're standing on the staircase, jump, I'll catch you. A lot of them little rascals will jump. Because they trust that you're going to catch them. And all the ladies go, oh, don't do that! You're going to miss him. Now, if they get a little older, nah, you ain't doing that. Because we've been hurt, we've been missed a few times, we, we've been uh, hit the ground a couple times, and all of a sudden we're like, no, no, I ain't trusting you. You know, the sad part of it is, many people treat God the same way. Yet God's never done anything to not earn your trust or not for you not to respect Him for the things that He's done in your life. God's allowed you to see His hand, His goodness, His working. A lot of times we blame God for things that are our own fault or uh, fault of others or living in a sinful world that we live in. And God said if you just simply trust Him, trust Him in the moment, trust Him to do the things that He's promised to do, not only in your lifetime, but throughout all of eternity, and you'll see the change. You'll understand that loving relationship that He's bringing in. You see, Christ's actions and Christ's motives are pure and loving. He cares for you today, and He wants you to know Him. Go over to 1 John chapter number 4. Clear back in the right side of your Bible, almost to the book of Revelation there. You'll find the book of 1 John. And there in 1 John, and uh, the fourth chapter of the book of 1 John, you'll find that Christ describes this relationship, this love, uh, this trust, this confidence that we have in God, knowing the working of God in our life. Uh, look there in verse number 10. It says, Herein is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be a propitiation for our sin. You know, it's not a fact that we're in this moment and God's working in our lives and it's something that we've done. It's what God's done for us. It's because of the trustworthiness of God. His Word, hey, He has always kept. Drop down to verse 14 of chapter 4 of 1 John. It says, And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent uh, the Son to be the Savior of the world. It is not only because we read it within the Word of God, not only because we see it in other people's lives, but it has been from generation to generation that God has always done. And God has sent forth His Son to be the Savior of the world, to, to bring us through this life into eternity, that God is working and God has brought these things to pass. And yet many people today in this culture that we live in and, and all the information that's out there today have failed to see God because we've pushed God out of our society and out of our uh, culture today. Uh, we gave the government the right to teach the children and to tell them whatever they wanted to tell them. And we agreed that these things were good for us as a nation, but now we're reaping the consequences of that. Because, friend, when you took prayer and got out of school, now we've got chaos today. And this chaos has brought people that are very skeptical and very uncommitted and, and, and lacking sacrifice today. And therefore, we've got a world that's just so confused. It is so uh, out of sorts today that we can't even see what's going on. And, friend, the reason for that is because God warned us that there is a great deceiver. And Satan will cause people today to procrastinate, to put off God, to say, well, someday I'm going to deal with that. I don't know how many times over my lifetime of my ministry that you know I've dealt with people, talked to people on the street, talked to them on the home, the hospitals, the funeral homes, and, and they'll say, you know, preacher, I, I understand what you're saying. And before I die, I'm going to get right with God. You know who teaches them to do that? Satan does. Satan does. Because in their heart of hearts, they know God loves them. Amen. 
But in their corrupt mind, they believe they got all the time to deal with God. And it's on their schedule and not on God's schedule. The problem with it being, folks, you don't control it. No. it, it the reality of that absurdity is that we think that we have life because we choose it. Friends, you weren't born on your time. You weren't even born on your mama's time. No. You weren't even born when the doctor said you'd be born. You know where you were born? When God said you'd be born. Amen. And you know when you're going to die? When God says you're going to die. God says it's appointed unto man once to die. And after this, the judgment. Hebrews chapter 9, 27. You look it up for yourself. But so many of us believe, I've got time. And that's the reality of where people live today. Brother Truman and I stepped over and we were speaking a little bit before uh, church and he was telling, he was pulled into a place in Indianapolis, a truck driver, he was going on loading, so, or pick up a load, whatever he was doing. Guy steps out of a truck, has a heart attack right in the parking lot. I believe he survived that one. I think mean, Brother Truman was down me. My son and daughter-in-law had to go up to Mission Walk yesterday, so my wife got the grandchildren all day long. <laughs> she's happy today. The house is a disaster, but she's happy. <laughs> we had four of them, and so we had two of them. We had two foster children. We had four for a while, then we had two for a while. When I, I had to work till the two went home. <laughs> then I showed up. It's been that day. But folks, before long, that time's going to pass us by. They went up north to that funeral. 47-year-old guy went out, good health, doing what he was going to do. And then passed away into eternity. And folks, it's not something that you just say, well, preacher, you're trying to, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm telling you, there's a lot of lies out there that tell you that that's not going to happen to you. There's something in the back of our mind that we think we're always going to live. And yet, we know the reality of it that we're not. But Satan continues to deceive us. Second Corinthians chapter number 11. Listen to the warning here in the church at Corinth as they're dealing with these very same realities. Understanding the humanity of life and how short life is and, and the great deceiver that is working to cause us to keep our blinded eyes spiritually. To believe we're in a place where we're really not. Look on down there to verse number 13 of 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if he ministers also his ministers also are transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Folks, there's a lot of deceivers out there in this world. And you've got to know who's telling the truth and who's not. Drop back just to, at the beginning of chapter number 11 there, 2 Corinthians. Verse 3 says this, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. You hear the warning there? Folks, this is not something new. This is not because we're living in those last days. Miss Rhonda sang that great song about, you know, I wish we'd all been ready because Jesus Christ is coming back. And think, well, we're living right here these last days, and that's the problem. My friend, since the creation of mankind, the Garden of Eden, when God put man in a perfect environment, and Adam and Eve had all the blessings of God and all the things of God. And there was nobody else around. But Satan was still at work. Amen. Satan was working there. He beguiled Eve. And Eve then uh, told Adam. And Adam believed the lie over the truth and, and denied God and, and hid from God and was fearful because of all the lies he heard. And folks, today we're hearing a lot of lies out there. All that information out there and all these people that are trying to corrupt you. And, I, and I, you know, I, I'm not telling you these folks are liars. No. <laughs> I'm telling you there's a lot of confusion out there going yeah. on today. There's a lot of people that are serving their own selves as the Bible tells us. 
And because they have their own agenda, their own uh, uh, bellies are full of this power and this pride and this deceit that's in this world. And they're propagating this. And, you know, man, this internet and, and the television sets and the radios today, there's all kinds of clamoring all around you. But time's marching on. And these people want you to believe that they got a better plan than God. Right. And they can make you fat and wealthy and rich and, and easy. But friend, there's consequences to everything they do. And they're not seeing it. You know, they're, they've got all these care packages, and I'm going to meddle here just a little bit while I'm meddling in those false things going out there. Folks, when you give people free rent, somebody else is paying for it. I read on the internet this week, there's a landlord out there in California. One of his renters owe him $17,000 in rent. Because they put off and put off and put off and put off. Say, so, well, but these people need some place to live. That man has to pay his bills also. Understand. That there's consequences for every decision you make. And say, so, well, we're going to help these folks. Yes, but who's it going to cost to help these folks? I'm not against helping others, folks. But I am against enabling people to do wrong. It costs something to live in this world. And it's just not about money. I mean, I, we, we make it all about money because we think money drives this world. Friends, you can die with a whole lot of money. You're going to die. So I'll, I'll leave my kids a whole lot. I, I've dealt with several estates. Help people working their way through it. Been PR for a couple of them. I don't know. I'm just insane. I don't know why I do these things. But I do. I try to help people. And, and uh, folks, people make this thing so difficult. They think they got power and they meddle in other people's business where they don't belong. And the government, the courts, and the lawyers wind up with more of that than anybody else does. Even when you tell your kids, now this is what I want done. It just takes one to mess that whole thing up. And all of a sudden you've got five lawyers and everybody's in it for a free-for-all. Now listen to the preacher and I'm done meddling here. I got this thing. They want you to believe they're going to get you all that money. But it's going to cost you to get that. And the only one that really wins in those cases, and I've seen it over and over and over again, are the courts and the lawyers. They're the ones that profit. So, well, preacher, now you're just, I don't know, but I told you I was going to meddle before I got into it. <laughs> Aggravates the fool out of me. Because people won't do right by others, and others misuse that. For their own gain. And the Bible warns us that there are people in it for themselves. Satan's in it for himself, friend. He's trying to enlarge his own kingdom above God's kingdom. And that's what's creating the problem. There's truth and there's lies in this world. And you have to understand that God gives you everything you need right here. He leads you into that eternal truth. But there's a whole lot of folks trying to lie and take you away from that thing. There are people that are trying to cause you all kinds of confusion about what's really going on. And life's difficult enough by itself, friend. Life's not easy one to live. It, it's hard sometimes to, to figure out the right thing to do. It's hard to show people love. Because no matter what you do, they can twist that thing around, make their lives cause you to have conflict with them. And you can do it at work. You can do it in the neighborhood. <coughs> you can do it at home. Boy, husbands and wives can get themselves in more messes because instead of seeing what's really going on, they make it all about themselves. And they make it about me and what I want and what I'm going to do. And they miss the truth of what God's doing in their life. They fail to understand 
that you can live this life and have peace and joy when you put your focus on God and on what God's doing for you. Flip over to 2 Corinthians chapter number 6 there, just back a couple more chapters from where we got there in chapter 11 and verse 3. Go to 2 Corinthians 6 and 2. And he says this, For he saith, I have heard thee in the time accepted. Salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. God's saying there's a time and there's a reason for these things going on. And God said he's listening. There is an accepted time. There's a time when God is working on your spirit. And his spirit is drawing your spirit. And the truth of God has brought forth these moments that we may see God and know God and walk with God and have Jesus Christ as our Savior. He's helped us. He's secured us. He's brought us to this place where we can understand the things of God. We can know the truth. We can understand that God loves us and that God's brought His Son into this world to be the Savior of the world. We can understand that God has a plan. And as we walk down through this life, it's not about I'm getting old and, and everything's going wrong and everything's falling apart. It's because God's preparing us <coughs> to meet Him. It's because God's brought forth these things into our life that we could meet that doctor, meet that nurse, understand the working of God, have our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren see the hand of God and the working of God. I don't have to grow old and bitter and grumpy. I can be a person that can glorify God and praise God and lift up His name in the moment that I'm living in and see the hand of God and know the goodness of God in my life. Why? Because Jesus Christ met my need when I needed Him. He, he secured my salvation. He suckered me and brought me along into that point in that time where He gave me the help and encouraged my heart and allowed me to see His hand working. Go over to the book of James in the fourth chapter of the book of James and He again brings this matter of time and, and folks, priorities and time is, is so important to us as believers and as uh, people that are coming to the moment where eternity is going to change. Folks, when you leave this life, you're going to meet eternity. You're going to live beyond that grave. Now, I know there are people out there, I, I know there's teachers, and I know there's philosophers out there that will tell you, well, you're just going to die and lay there in that casket and the worm's going to come out your eyes. That's not what's going to happen. Because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Life does not end with the grave. Now, people want you to believe that. You know why? Because they want you to stay away from God. They don't want you to have to deal with that. They want you to believe that you're just going to live here and you're going to have everything. They're going to give you everything you need and you're just going to have a wonderful life. Take two pills and you'll feel better tomorrow. And all of a sudden, you're taking 154 pills. <laughs> And you still don't feel no better. James chapter number 4. Down there in verse 14. Whereas ye know not which shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Now folks, that's a hard reality. That, that's one of those that we come to to understand and, 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 and as we get older we, we agree with that and we see that, you know, man, it's been just a short time. But it's almost over. Well, no, no, preacher. I, I know people that live to be 100. Yeah. But I also know people that died at 17. Yes. Vanished away. In fact, I read on the internet last night there's a little six-year-old girl that was killed up in New Carlisle, Indiana. And they arrested a little 14-year-old boy. I don't know if he did it or didn't do it. But her life was over. Vanished away. There's parents and grandparents and neighbors and schoolmates that are now sitting there today saying, what in the world happened here? How does life end that quick? Because 
God warns us that life appeareth, but for a little time. It comes out of nowhere in our world. So, oh, no, no, I, they, them scientists, they can prove all this. They can show how baby is born and, a, and how that embryo grows and then how this fetus comes to, uh, to be a human. Now, friend, they were a human being before they ever got here because God created them. And God had an appointed time. And God gave them life. And God's going to tell them when life's over. So you've got to understand the time. You've got to know the things that God's doing. Let me close. John chapter number 10. Gospel of John chapter number 10. Jesus here is giving us the explanation of this life and understanding the moments and the days that we're living in. The, the, the thing that we call life. Why is it so important? Because it prepares us for eternity. This time is not about here. You know, it, it, there's people out there that want you to believe that if you die with the most toys, you win. Now that's the craziest thing you ever heard of, folks. That's a lie. You can't put your car in a casket with you. What's the old preachers used to say? You've never seen a hearse with a U-Haul pulled behind it? <laughs> so, oh, I've got all these houses. No, you just got them as long as the government will let you keep them. Because if you don't pay your taxes, it ain't your house no more. They decide they want to whiten the street, they just take your yard. <clears throat> oh, wait, 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 wait. No. <clears throat> you don't. Oh, look at all these shoes I own. <laughs> now, it's important to folks. That uh, Filipino lady that was over there, she had what? Yeah, Marco. Yeah, remember that story? I was trying to remember how many shoes. Bunch of his pats. <laughs> It was in the thousands of pairs. But folks, you can't take them with you. Nope. <coughs> so, preacher here, what does that mean? It means that life is but a vapor that appeared for a little time and vanishes away. God said, you better put your priorities in the right thing. Take care of the time that you have because soon you're going to meet God. You find your place over in John chapter number 10. Found down in verse 27, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I will give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Here Jesus is telling you, listen. You will pass through this life. You're going to end this time on the earth. But those that follow me, those that hear my voice and know my voice and accept that price that Jesus Christ paid for you and Christ being your Savior, He said, I'll give unto them eternal life. Time without end. You're going to live in eternity. The question is, where will you live in eternity? Will you live according to the truth of God? Or will you die by the lie of Satan? You see, death has consequences to it. When you pass from this life unto eternity. And Jesus said, you need to be prepared for that. Because this time is marching on. And as this time winds down, where will you spend eternity? That's the question. It's not about what you have here. It's about your relationship with God. It's about the one that you're following. It's about the one that you believe in. The one that you hear. The one that gives you the truth or the lie of this world. Folks, there's a lot of confusion out there. But Jesus says, here's the straight and the narrow way. Here's the one that you need to follow. Here's the one that you need to hear. Here's the one that loves you today. 
You know who's going to take care of you in eternity? God is. God is. God's will is for every human being to spend eternity with Him. To have all the glory and the honor and the prestige of this place called heaven. To walk the streets of gold. To see the uh, gates of pearl and jasper. To know the goodness of God. God says, that's where I want you to spend your time in eternity. But many people will miss that. Because they believe they got time to do it later. Every time you procrastinate, there's a consequence to it. And I say, well, yeah, but I can fix that. You won't fix eternity. Because without Christ, without Christ, you will not enter heaven. When this time is over and eternity comes, you need to be ready to meet God. You can stand with us, please. 349. 349 ladies are going to come. <coughs> Do not procrastinate. Do you have any Father, Lord God, I pray now for these that have listened to the truth of thy word. Lord, give us childlike faith. Help us to know the time. As the songwriter been, I wish we'd all been ready. Are you ready? To meet God. Lord, I pray there's not a soul that stands before you today that's not ready to meet you. Amen. Lord, help us take an honest look at our time. Do we know what it's costing us not to accept you and to follow you as Lord of our life? Lord, I pray each one of us will make the decision you're calling us to make right now. That we will give it all to you and trust and follow you today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Ladies, we'll lead you 349, softly and tenderly. Jesus is calling. Will you listen to his words this morning? <coughs>
to pray, Lord, for each person that's here this day has made that commitment that they might live according to the Holy Spirit and walk according to His life. We pray in Jesus' name and we pray that you'll be back to seeking. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.